Hey friends, thanks for joining us. Smash that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment. Tell us what you think. Benny, where can they find us on social media? Uh, you can find us at Ray Benny Sports. We're on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and of course, Reddit. Check us out there. And Let's- don't forget, leave us a rating on your favorite podcast provider. That's a good one. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Winnipeg Jets, done for the season, elimination. We're not going to talk about the game much. That's already, that's gone. That's happened. That's old news. Uh, a lot of stuff going down uh, after the game, post game bonus presser into player reactions, into Rick bonus being called in to talk again. Uh, initial thoughts on what's going on. Wow. What a disaster it ended up being, man. I mean, mm-hmm. not only did you get outplayed in that game in an embarrassing fashion, um, then you had the coach come out and just rip the players disgusted all this. Um, and then you're expecting, okay, something's going to happen. Things are going to blow up. You know, this team is not coming back the way it is. And then the players came out and fought back against the coach. The, the pushback everyone was hoping for in the uh, games actually happened in the pressers and the likes of Wheeler, um, you know, Connor, all those guys pushed back at uh, bonus that he did not handle it properly. And he wished he had done it face to face. Oh, give me a break. <sighs> give me a break. This is another confirmation as what has been the issue for years. Last year, around the same time, maybe a couple weeks earlier, I said that Shifley and Wheeler are so far gone as locker room cancers that it doesn't matter who they bring in. And no. look what happened. Same thing. Uh, they got to go. You know, it, go ahead. And, it, and it's funny because we, we saw bonus come in and the Jets had a awesome first half of the season, right? More than what I expected at all. I expected the second half of the season to be their whole season, basically. Like the, the way that they played and the way they bowed out in the playoffs. But you know what? They, they turned it around and you thought, okay, bonus did something. Bonus got through to these guys. But when the times got tough, the players reverted back to their old ways. And you, you're going to tell me since February, bonus never behind closed doors went up to these guys and said, hey, guys, what the heck's going on? We need he to figure this has. out. He absolutely so, has. Exactly. He called so, them out in public earlier at that, that time. Yeah. And look what happened. He said almost the exact same thing. Our good players didn't show up. Uh, there, you know, the, there's no pushback. Whatever they get punched in the face, it's it's the same thing as it was earlier on their year. Yeah. So that so, so sure the comments, talked about it. So the comments of hey, come to it face to face behind closed doors, not to media through media. Yeah, exactly. Bonus has done it. He's probably done it a few times this season, and he probably yeah. got frustrated to the point where, hey man, I'm gonna just blow up in this this interview. And maybe it wasn't the best way. Who knows? I mean, we'll see what blowback happens from this all. But yeah. But I can see the frustration in the guy's face. Like he's probably being punching the wall, trying to get through to these guys. And he probably thought, okay, I got through to them. This game's going to be good. And then he watches that display for three hours, you know, of guys just coasting guys, not giving it all. And no, this is the best way. The way he addressed it in the media is the best way it's been going on. How many years now? 12 years of whatever, just letting it glide. We have full houses. We're making cash. It doesn't matter. Well, it matters now, especially yeah. with this stupid ass season ticket drive that they tried to pull oh. off a couple of weeks ago. Good God. That's not going to go well at this point. You know, no. to me, Wheeler in all his time here, great player. He's been a star. He's, he's gave it all on the ice, but he is one thing. He's not, is not a leader. Um, no, you know, and, it, and it's funny that he's not, but he showed it again. And the funny thing is, I mean, the team is following him still thinking he was the captain. You know, de facto. I can't believe still, Lowry said that. Right? I can't believe Lowry said that. And that's a, a, the disappointing thing to me was Lowry and Morrissey, the fact that they also echoed these sentiments because it was just like you, I saw a different play from those guys. Like Lowry was a beast in the playoffs. So if anything, I would have expected him to be frustrated at every other player for their display. Yeah. But he again went out. He backed basically Wheeler and the players, and 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 you know went against Bones. But this is a culture that they've been developing over the years. Us against them, whatever happens in-house, we keep it in-house. This is the same culture that Shevel Dayoff comes from in Chicago, where the whole shit happened with Beach and the sexual assault. Let's keep things in-house. I know it's a little extreme in regards to comparisons, but this is the same culture that we have here. Like, let's not show any uh, whatever cracks in, in, in the in the foundation. Everything's fine and nothing's addressed and the culture stays the same. Yeah, I mean, it's a this, losing culture. This is two years in a row now that these end of season pressers have been a disaster. You know, like 
almost like embarrassing to the organization. Yeah. Plus you had guys like Kevin Hayes and Eakin rip the dressing room last season saying that it was probably one of the worst dressing rooms they were in. You had James Patrick who coaches the uh, Winnipeg ice, you know, saying, it, telling the story of those guys telling him this stuff. So it's out there, right? So now, now you got this display. I mean, Jet, Winnipeg already has a hard time attracting free agents. Is the comments by bonus now going to make it even harder for them to attract? Or is it just the players no, in the dressing room that it's going to be harder to attract? Absolutely the players. Like, who would want to come here? This is two years in a row where your star players, in one way or another, Shifley two years ago, Dubois this year, where there was no commitment going forward with the Jets and optimism and excitement and wanting to be here. It was crazy that they had Dubois and Perfetti back to back or beside each other at the podium or table. Yeah. They asked Dubois a whole bunch of questions and they're like, oh, hi, Cole, by the way, you're here. And he was all excited about next year, talking about wanting to be here and excited about rehabbing and want to be part of the team. You got nothing like that from Dubois, just like you got nothing like that from Shifley last year. Yeah, they so don't want to be here. Why so the, are they still here? So the question to you then is why would you put a young guy like Perfetti who is just starting out his career in Winnipeg and put him with Dubois, who's doesn't tell anyone about his future. He always has to think about his future. So you're almost setting a bad example for Perfetti. Why wouldn't you put Perfetti with a guy like Pionk, you know, who's been here for a while and actually enjoys playing here. And, and he also gave it his all on the ice. So it's part for the chorus. That's why with this hockey club. Yeah. And, and the, but that's the thing. You, nothing's changed. Shovel de Oz back. Bonus is back. Yeah. These players, what are you going to get? Even if you're going to try and trade Wheeler, what are you going to get? You, you almost got to pay half his salary or more no. just Buy to get him rid of him. Buy and him can up. you really bring him back at this point? Buy him out. Buy yeah. him out. That's it. You're not going to get nothing for him. Give me a break. Uh, and, and yeah, Chevy's going to come back. There's no doubt. They gave me an extension, whatever. But I'm a fan of actually Rick Bonus coming back. I, at least he shows a damn and he cares about this team and he cares about a culture change that he's willing to call it out in public. Finally, like I applaud Paul Maurice's patience now for not calling out that garbage to whatever three years that it's been happening. Like I'm not going to let Pomo off the hook though, because things w started at some point with him one way and then they went down towards what it is now. So at some point he either, stopped caring enough or let these guys kind of run the asylum um, and he stepped back. But we don't know for sure what happened in there, but I, I'm not absolving Pomo of everything in this but dressing a, room either. A different coach just came in and the same results I'm, I'm not. But yeah, I'm saying this culture went from here, you know, back in 2017, 18, and it slowly dropped year right. after year. He was the one running the ship. Even Lowry, Dave Lowry came in and I mean, I, I, I don't blame any of these. Like I don't blame Lowry or Bonus. The, the the locker room is tainted. Things need to change. It's and you got guys who don't want to be here. You might as well just move on from them at this point because that's not helping the locker room either. They have to move on. They have to move. On. Dubois clearly doesn't want to be here, and his intentions are clear. They have to move him. And oh, Shifley, yeah. why not? If if anything, Shifley would be out of the three Dubla Wheeler Shifley would be the one that I hold on to. There's a little bit of emotional ties with that first ever draft pick. Dale Howarchuk's statue looking at him almost every day from where it is. Uh, at least you can play that and there might still be a glimmer of hope. But Wheeler, just buy him out. Dubois, trade him. You might get depth guys, at least who have character. And that's another thing. Shevel Dayov has let all the character guys just melt away from this team since 2018. It's ridiculous. He can't see character. He doesn't no. recognize it, this guy. No, and, and his moves he made earlier this year are head scratch too. You got Jonathan Kovacevic. You you put him on waivers to hang on to someone else. He went and played full-time with Montreal. Uh, even Esamont, um, who yeah. they put Tampa on Bay. waivers, ended up in Tampa, scored a big goal in in game five ultimately it didn't change anything in that series but you know he played like so why were you keeping the guys that they kept over these guys it doesn't make sense to me and i that's chevy right there making those decisions yeah and and even that where are the younger guys are, are there besides perfetti are there any other guys from the moose that are going to step up next year uh, and be able ready to play probably not so we're going to have the likes of melon mellow menelinen um stanlin guys back like that in the lineup again harkin should get a shot yeah, what happened to Harkins? <laughs> and Gwanky, the, the defenseman, he, he should get a shot. And and Ch uh, Chisholm, but they're, they're, the defense is full again. It's not like anyone's gone. Well, you know, unless you're going to trade Dylan or Schmidt or make a move there or something, but they're all signed. Yeah. Well, if you were Mark Chipman, what would be 
the first move yeah, you're making. I know my first move uh, would be to get a hockey ops guy. This is ridiculous. This buddy buddy relationship he has with the GM. Like there has to be a buffer there. There has to be someone like Brian Burke who won't take Shevel Day off shit, who knows how to run a team, who knows how to run a successful team. They need that. They need that. That would be my first move. But then you also then remove Chipman from talking into Chevy's ear, which is probably happening more than we think or know, because he wants control of that, right? I mean, to me, I would have cleaned house. I would have cleaned house last year. I would have cleaned house this year. Got rid of Chevy bonus and start fresh from it and let someone else come in and either trade guys, uh, well, hopefully trade guys, because you can't keep bringing the same core back, you know? So, and then you can't ask for people to pay hey, buy season tickets, but we're not going to make any changes. You know, mm-hmm. the same thing. And we're happy just making a playoffs. Like even Chevy and his presser with it's a tough thing to make playoffs. It sure is. Yes. And it's good. You guys have made the playoffs the last little bit, but you have not had success and you backed into the playoffs this year. Yeah. So 43 minutes of uselessness. Oh, every one of his pressers is like that, man. Everyone. Yeah. You know? so, so what what's the move that you're making if you got uh, Chipman shoes on? Again, clean house. Start you're start from scratch. House. Get rid of GM, wow. get rid of coach. And if you want to have a buffer in there, go ahead. But I would I would have got rid of everyone at this point and started from scratch. I would have done that last year. Yeah, I yeah. mean, they're not. I mean, they yes, they got bonus, but I would have cleaned out Chevy too last year. So with Hellebuck saying that he does not want to go through a rebuild, uh, you're willing to risk losing Hellebuck to clean office. I, I don't want to lose Hellebuck, and I think a lot of people are going to be quite disappointed with goaltending in this city once Hellebuck goes because he gets the blame no matter what he does. But yeah. You know what? If you're going to start over, clean house, unfortunately, yeah, it would also include trading Hellebuck, uh, Wheeler, Shifley, and Dang. going from there. And, and if I, somehow you can repair with Shifley, like you said, yeah. I would love to keep Shifley around. I would love to keep Hellebuck yeah. around. But yes, he's, yeah. he's he's not going to stick around for a rebuild. He's he's getting to that age, man. Yeah. Roster-wise, I do think they're still close. And I'm, I'd be willing to give up top-line talent like Shifley. And, well, Wheeler's not even top-line talent anymore. He's a third-liner at best, but not for $8 million or whatever he's making. Uh, and see if you can get some depth players and character players and try to win with Hellebuck. Uh, yeah. So that, I, I mean, love to, a point I read, like, when's the last time a 10-plus million goalie won a Stanley Cup? That's a lot of cap space that's being eaten up. And that's going to be his next contract. Yeah, and, and it's not going to probably be in Winnipeg. So I agree. I mean, if you can, if you can bring in someone to clean it and from the top and make some moves and bring this roster together again, go for it, make that run back, but you can't run it back with the same core and no, the same place. That's impossible. And no. the coach now the bonus is here. You can't No, no it's, it's, but I feel like that's what they're going to do, man. The, t- the, the team is just spinning their wheels. You got players that are fighting back against the coach. Coach is calling out the players and the GM is just happy to make the playoffs. Yeah. Like, I don't know where this team's going. I, I don't know if there's any direction. And who knows? Chipman's going to probably send out an email saying, hey, this is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Enough emails. No, Exactly. Enough. It's it's show it on the ice. They went out of the way in emails and news pressers to say that there was pushback. Get, a, get out of here with that trash, man. Use your brain a bit. This is horrible. Friends, put your comments in regards to if you had Mark Chipman's shoes on, if you had those Gucci alligators on, what would be the first move that you would make? Let's look at the other playoff matchups. You like that. Uh, let's look at the Canadian teams, Toronto and Edmonton advance. Shout out to those teams. Let's look at the Toronto and Florida matchup. Shout out also to Paul Maurice for making the second round. Shout out, eh? Good for him. A lot of yeah. shout outs going on right now. Look what happens when a team <laughs> buys into a coach. They make it past the number one seed in the playoffs. Good for them. Let's look at Toronto and Florida. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, what a disaster for Boston, man. You win 60-something games and you're out. And you're up 3-1. Like, you blew a 3-1 series lead. Yeah, I think both of us said that they're, like, one of the best teams we've ever (laughs) seen in our lives. But we should have known better. Going into the playoffs, President's Cup uh, champions, all that kind of stuff. It never bodes well for them, right? Yeah, but Florida (laughs) had, like, the least. um, That's a big, what, 43-point differential? Yeah. And they overcame. Goaltending, man. The goaltending for Boston became average. Allmark wasn't himself. Even Swayman yesterday let in a couple. But Brofsky wasn't very good either. No, though. no, He's not below all. Nine hundred. But 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 Boston was their their D- team defense and their goaltending, right? The and whole they couldn't team get it just done. Collapsed. No. <laughs> Sorry, Boston. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk about Toronto and Florida. Uh, I'll let you go first because y'all know who I'm shooting for. Yeah, big big win for Toronto. Uh, finally overcoming that first round series, beating Tampa Bay in overtime in Game Six. 
Um, I think this is being a good series. I, I, I feel like Toronto is probably the better team here. And I do feel that Toronto is probably going to win this series, but the East is wide open for Toronto. Now, you know, that the big guns are kind of gone, Boston, Tampa Bay gone right now. You got yeah. Carolina and possibly New Jersey on the other side, right. Stopping you. So it's a very winnable East for Toronto right now. Yeah. I got Toronto taking this one as well. I don't think it'll be that close, but Borofsky, like we mentioned, was horrible. And I think Toronto is going to put the shots on him and they'll have this series under control. So I might even take Toronto in five in this one. Six for sure. We'll see the uh, Kachuk factor if you can get under some skins in Toronto or not. Uh, and know. Gudis, Radko Gudis, man, that guy is a uh, shit disturber. About there, is Wayne so. Simmons done? Is he not allowed to play in the playoffs? I think he's still good, but I don't maybe, see. Maybe if it gets out there. of hound, maybe it gets out of hand. Hound. Yeah. Maybe it gets out of hand. Uh, let's look at Edmonton. The Oilers getting past uh, the Kings in a really physical and good battle uh, against Vegas. We know about them. What do you see in this series? Yeah, this should be a good one. This will, this will be a Danny. It's the only one where actually, well, New Jersey winning makes Carolina and New Jersey also that, but one, one versus two. Um, whereas Dallas gets to play a lower seed all, all together, which is again, the seeding, which is not, you know, favorable to the team that finishes first, um, goaltending will be front and center in this one. We've seen Skinner struggle these playoffs. We've seen Braswa be okay, but uh, he wasn't tested all that much in, against Winnipeg. So he, he played well. So it's yeah. going to be interesting to see what he can do against McDavid, dry subtle and that offense. Um, I, you know, I, I picked Edmonton to make the cup final, so I'm going to stick with Edmonton winning this series. Yeah, I don't think this will be close. Edmonton just has too much firepower. Uh, they will give the, the Vegas defense and also Braswa fits. Like in the first couple of games against the Jets before injuries started to settle in, they gave the Jets a lot of opportunity. The Jets were leading in scoring opportunities. The difference between the Jets and the Oilers are the Oilers put them in the net. Uh, so I don't think, uh, again, Oilers in five, I don't think it'll even go to six. Uh, they won't be able to stop McDavid or Dreisaitl. It's too Depends much. on Skinner, man. If he can, if he plays the way he did against LA, then Vegas still has a chance. But if he can oh. get back to that season form, then yeah, I agree. This will this will be not too hard for Edmonton to win. Whoever wins this see... one is going to the cup for me on the East or the sorry in the West. West. I can't even see Vegas holding on to the puck. Like if you have no puck possession, uh, you can't control that speed. I I, I think McDavid Drysital will be able to just walk through that one two two zone that they just smash the jets with uh, i know i'm talking a lot but still <laughs> let's go to the other western matchup uh seattle dallas who do you see in that one great win for seattle over colorado you know uh -huh. overcoming the top seed your second year expansion team uh so good to see them make it um but i am going to go with dallas um i think they'll end up beating seattle it probably go i can see this one going six or seven like it'll be a close series and it'll be depending on goaltending for me in this one grubauer was freaking amazing in that series against Colorado, especially yesterday in the first period. I don't know. I think yeah. he had like 15, 16 saves or something. So, and then Ottinger on Dallas's side will, will be a tough one as well. So this will be a low scoring series to me as well. Uh, not as well, but for me, um, but I'm going Dallas. I think they got a little bit more experience. Who did Grubauer play for before? Colorado. <laughs> That's a thing. He's a streaky goalie. He yes. gets super hot and he was playing off a lot of emotion. And I think just that Ottinger goalie is steady, especially during the playoffs. So yeah. I'm going to take Dallas uh, again in five. I like that number five number in these a lot of these series. I'm you're you're thinking none of these five. are going long, eh? No, no. This episode is presented <laughs> by the number five. five. Uh, how about the Hurricanes playing either... No, nope. the Devils are the finish playing for sure. the Devils. Yes, yeah, four nothing win for the Devils. So the Devil, remember Putty? Yeah, the Devils. Yeah, well, that's going to be all over the internet's now. <laughs> uh, who do you got in that series? That's going um, to come up now. I'm going to take Carolina in this one. Um, I think they're more rounded team. They got a lot of firepower up front, some wicked defense. Uh, Anti Rantis played pretty good so far in the playoffs. Um, and then if he doesn't, they got Frederick Anderson back there. Uh, you know, Dallas or New Jersey had a little bit of issues this last series with their goaltending. Um, yeah. But this, what was his name? Schmid? Who came our, in? Our, uh, I'm not going to try the first name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he, he came in and played well, steady presence, and obviously got a shutout in game seven. So yeah, not bad for him, but I'll go with Carolina over New Jersey. As a Leafs fan, I'd love for New Jersey to win this series, but I think Hurricanes are going to take it. Like I said uh, in our playoff preview, I'm just a huge fan of Rob Bindemore. They're an experienced playoff team, and uh, I think they'll win the series against 
the devils. Yeah, they're, they're getting to that point where they've been here so many times, right? But just yeah. have not been able to finish. Yeah. So maybe it's like this Colorado. Will be the year. Yeah. It's like Colorado last year. You know, they've yeah. been there a couple of times. They're close. And now's the year. So I'll go yeah. Hurricanes. Let's move on to some CFL. Oh, friends, don't forget to put your playoff predictions uh, down there. Leave a like, leave a comment. CFL draft coming up in a couple of days. No, tomorrow. tomorrow. May 2nd. Who do you think will go number one? Who do you think should go number one to audio? Uh, auto, audio, Ottawa. Who should Ottawa pick number one? They should probably go O line or D line. You know, there's a lot of good guys out there, but I keep seeing this guy, uh, receiver Jared Wayne. And yes, he ended up signing a free agent contract with Houston Texans. So who knows what happens there? But just looking at his stats and some highlights of this kid, man, he looked pretty good. And maybe you don't get him now. But maybe you get him, you know, next year or the year after or something like that. I, I think that'd be a pretty good move. Yeah. No, he's a phenomenal receiver. And who knows if he will to stick with the team. But I will go. You know me. I like the O-line and the D-line. And I'm going to go with Dante Bull from Fresno State. A great athlete. A huge presence at 6'7", 320. The kid played basketball. So, you know, he has some good feet. I don't think he'd be, you know, he'd watch Trevor Harris's back from day one. He'd be slowly incorporated into the O-line, but he's one of those pillar Canadian offensive linemen at tackle that you can have for years. So uh, I'd be disappointed if Ottawa did not pick him. I actually have him down here too. He was my other guy. I was going back and forth between the two guys. You said Trevor, you said he'd be blocking for Trevor Harris though. So Ah, sorry. Uh, (laughs) Trevor Harris. He used to play for Ottawa a long time. Mazzoli. (laughs) I got Trevor Harris on the mind. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Probably because I think Saskatchewan should draft an old lineman because uh, yeah. they need one badly. He's in Saskatchewan? Yeah. There we go. Now we're all back on track. Hopefully they'll go kicker. Who would you like to see? <laughs> hey, it's a CFL draft. Who knows? That might be a very good choice. Uh, <laughs> see Winnipeg's kicking situation last year. <laughs> would you like to see? Who would you like to see the Winnipeg Blue Bombers draft? Yeah, and going back there, like you said, O-line, D-line, you know, I want them to go that way. Um, and that's usually the way they go, right? Um, yeah. Seven first-rounders, or sorry, sorry, they have seven first-rounders, 11 second-rounders, seven were used on O-linemen, three on D-linemen. Um, I'm going to go with the D-line on this one. Um, there's a, a kid named Lake Court Moore. Uh, yeah. You know, 48 tackles, 12 and a half tackles for a loss, six sacks, three knockdowns, and a forced fumble. I uh, for him last season so he looks like a pretty good force and i know there's a couple other d linemen there that are probably better than him or coming out better than but their chances are they're gone before they get to the bombers yeah he would be a good uh player for the bombers to take and he has a great mentor in jake thomas someone who came was it acadia yeah he came out of the east coast uh you know was a special teamer and then he slowly made his way into the regular rotation on the D line. That's something that we could see. And I also like to see maybe a guy like Cole Tucker, a receiver that perhaps from Northern Illinois might fall down to the bombers. Decent size at six, two could be a great possession receiver. I always like to see Canadians on the receiving core, uh, but he just recently got an invitation to uh Vikings camp. So who knows? But I think at the bombers at nine might as well eight or nine, eight, uh, eight, they might as well, take the best player available. Yeah. I mean, there's someone for sure. Who's a day one starter. You know what I mean? Exactly. And there's a couple of linemen too, that are pretty strong up there that they'll have a chance if, if any of these guys are gone. So they got a lot of options and choices. CFL draft first two rounds available on TSN. Thanks TSN for broadcasting. Something. Wow. They're actually airing. It? Woo! We love you. TSN. <laughs> Milt's the best thing going on on that broadcast. For We're sure. going to go on with our online specials of best of best, players best here best starters uh we're going for the kind of starting defense for the western division top four defensive players uh only rules being you have to have one d lineman one linebacker one db and then you add another player from whatever position you want so uh i'll start off i'll pick a d lineman and i'll go with doug brown uh seven times cfl all-star 2001 most outstanding canadian uh and he was like the only or the second defensive tackle to win most outstanding Canadian uh, in CFL history. So I'm going with Doug Brown. Uh, I'll start DL line too. Then I guess I'll go uh, John Helton, uh, CFL all-star 10 times, uh, 14 years of play at defensive tackle, a long time. This is back early eighties, uh, late seventies, yeah. right? Um, plus he ended up in the uh, CFL hall of fame, inducted into Alberta sports hall of fame. Um, you know what? 
they just had a pretty, and I don't know a lot about him because I was just looking him up today and I was just find, reading more and more about him. Sound like an awesome player and had a pretty good career. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. Doug Brown, I had to go with because I needed a Canadian in there. I had to go off with a Canadian right away. I don't know. <laughs> I know some people don't like the ratio, so that's for you. Uh, you go next. Who else you got on that team? Uh, let's go uh, linebacker. Let's move that way. I'm going with uh, Willie Pless uh, at yeah. linebacker. Again, CFL All-Star 11 times. Uh, most outstanding defensive player five times. Won a great cup. Um, over 1,200 tackles, 84 sacks, 39 interceptions. So for me, that's that's dominant play at the linebacker position. I also have Willie Pless. Most tackles in CFL history, over 1,200. And out of those five defensive players of the year, he won four in a row. From 94 yeah. to 97. That's like Doug Flutie. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's Doug Flutie kind of noise. So I also have Willie Pless. I also took another defensive lineman. I have James Quick Parker uh, in the Western Division. He's one of the best sack masters that there is. 139 and a half sacks. I had his best years with the BC Lions, especially a lot against the Blue Bombers in the mid 80s. He was just a beast. Three time defensive player of the year. And he still holds the record of most sacks in a season in Edmonton with 18 and a half. So I got James Quick. Parker, who do you got next? I'm going to stick with the linebacker position then because I was trying to decide between uh, Plus and this guy. I'm going to go with Dan Kepley. Um, oh. You know what? Eight great cup titles with Edmonton, player coach as well. Three-time most outstanding defensive player award. So just, you know, and, and in between Dale Porter and Tom Towns, they, they, they were combined. They were a force at the linebacker position for the Eskimos. Um, I guess they were still called the Eskimos back then. So they were. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so I'm going to pick him as my extra guy here. Dan Kepley. That's a pretty good one. I, yeah, it's hard to argue against any of these. Yeah. Uh, my last one, I'm taking a DB. I'm going to go with Les Brown. Uh, he leads pro football, not just CFL, professional football in interceptions with the 87. Uh, he, and he has a team records for Western teams, the Winnipeg in 14, although he was in the East when he played for Winnipeg. But we know the W stands for West and winning. And he also has a record for BC with 11. So I'm going to go with uh, Les Brown. Yeah, I agree. I got Les Brown here as well on my list. And it was hard to go against those numbers uh, that he had. What a career. Yeah. Um, not much else I can say. He was dominant. Like, what, what, do, what do people want us to do? Consider the Bombers for the East and the West? Then we'd be charged with with having bombers and being homers on both teams because we are part of a dominant franchise that has won a lot of great cups and consistently lately. Just saying. Yeah, we should have. We could have picked Milt then for uh, wide receivers on both the East and West, right? And he would win, and you can argue. Exactly. You couldn't. <laughs> CFL fans, put your best of the West defensive players in there. Give us a defensive lineman, a linebacker, a DB, and whatever of your choice. You don't have to throw a Canadian in there, but if you could, that'd be great. Let's go hot topics with Lamar Jackson signed. Where do you rank the Ravens? So many questions still here for me. Can you, can he stay healthy? Uh, can he progress as more of the passer? Is Odell ready to bounce back? I definitely see this team making the playoffs um, and being in that top seven in the AFC um, because John Harbaugh's teams are always good. Their defense is always strong, but as a contender, um, I think it'll be tough for them to get out of the AFC. Yeah, with Lamar Jackson signed, they they are definitely somewhere between number seven and ten in the AFC and number ten and twelve in the NFL. Uh, he actually has a weapon at receiver, and uh, he'll be happy with his money. So we'll see what he does. Who won the NFL draft? I'm going to go with the Eagles. I messaged you like hours after or the day after. I'm like, the Eagles won the draft already. It's like they have two of the best defensive players in the first round, and they already have the infrastructure around them to be successful. Uh, they have Jalen Carter. Uh, He'll be a, a what you may call it, a generational player. And Nolan Smith as a rusher in the first round. So I'm going to take them. Yeah, I got to agree. And then they also went uh, uh, guard and Tyler Steen and then DB, one of the best DBs in there, Sidney Brown. Um, plus a trade for DeAndre Swift. I know that's not part of the draft, but they traded a draft pick for him. And that's a big one that'll help their offense and make it more powerful. Yeah, they led the league in sacks by like 15 last year. And they got better. Yeah. And younger and cheaper. Sutter fired from the Flames. Thoughts on that? I guess I expected it at this point. If you, if traveling is getting fired, Brad traveling, the GM got fired. Um, you know, and then just listen to Maloney's press conference to t- today. You know, interviewed twenty five players. They all came back to the same point. Um, it wasn't working. Sutter's abrasive style. Um, you know, is beginning to wear thin on that roster, so it wasn't going to work out. So 
again, they, they, something the Jets don't do, they clean the house and they're going to start fresh. Yeah, Calgary, mm, there's no surprise there. Of course, it's in a situation of players crying because the coach is too hard on them. Give me a break. Yeah. New, gener- new generation of players. <laughs> you got a brickhead? Yeah, I'm going to give it uh, kind of a combo one. I'm going to give it to Jordan Everly uh, for his hit on Audrey, Andre, uh, sorry, Andrew Cogliano uh, from go. behind, which left Cogliano with a broken neck. The fact that he came back and finished that game is crazy in the first Hockey. place. But I'm going to give the brickhead to Jordan Everly and to George Peros because Everly did not get any discipline for this hit at all, which is amazing. Ended up getting to play in game seven. So those guys, those guys get my brickhead of the week. How does George Peros still like you don't want to see anyone not have a job? I get it. But like your job is to make sure players are safe when someone gets a broken neck. Like, yeah, get out of here. What like, that's joker. pretty serious. Like, you think that is a worthy suspension? Right there, right? Yeah. Nothing. You got a two-minute penalty. Not even a major. <laughs> shout out. I'm going to give a shout out to Paul Maurice and Jamie Compton, uh, former Jets coaches, for making the second round of the playoffs and beating probably the greatest team that either of us have ever seen in our lives play almost, other than maybe the Penguins and the early Oilers. Yeah. Shout out to them. Shout out what about, to Paul Maurice. You might as well give Dave Lowry a shout out, too, because he made it to the second round with Seattle, too. Yo, shout out. <laughs> shout out to all the coaches who are doing well. <laughs> and Claude Noel, Claude Noel is apparently a, a scout for the New Jersey Devils. So, See? See? <laughs> See? You got a shout out? Yes, I'm going to give a uh, shout out to the five Canadians that were drafted in the NFL, which is the highest ever Canadians in the draft. Uh, Matthew Bergeron, Sidney Brown, Sidney Sow. Uh, Tr- uh, Tavius Robinson and Chase Brown, who is Sydney's identical brother. So identical brothers got drafted in this draft. So shout out to them. Dang, family ties all up in the football. Yeah. Yo, what about Joy Porter Jr. being on the Steelers? That's yeah, crazy, yeah. too. Yeah. I Thanks. like that. Thank the Bears for that one. Yeah, that was a great trade. <laughs> Suckers. Benny, you got anything to say to our friends? Uh, you know what? Just thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget, subscribe, follow, uh, check us out, leave a comment, leave a like, and have a good week. And thanks for joining us. Be kind, be safe, and help each other out. Hey, friends and neighbors, don't forget to check us out online on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Ray Denny Sports. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. Leave a like, leave a comment, tell us what you think.